All right, what's going on everybody? Welcome back to the garage and welcome back to a new season. Excited, got my boy Jesse here with me, who is, uh, he just got in from, uh, from New York. How's your summer, man? Uh, well, my summer was like seven weeks long. I've been back in school since July, so uh, it's been quite, quite the road in school so far, but uh, getting closer to December and getting up to Cochrane, which is what I'm looking forward to. Nice. Yeah. Yeah, we're excited the season's upon us. We've got lots planned for this year. Um, wanted to get a video out to you guys today. We've got lots to talk about. Some cool stuff happened over the last couple of weeks uh, with some really exciting launches at uh, Heydays this year from Articat. And um, I think we just wanted to sort of get a video out there talking a little bit about what we think about this new, uh, this new chassis, this new sled, this new motor. I mean, they've got a lot of stuff that's, uh, that's coming out. So we're gonna talk a little bit about the Catalyst. And, uh, you know, it's obviously for us, I mean, we do ride Skidoo and I think a lot of folks out there, you know, probably don't know necessarily that we do have experience with other sleds. Yeah. Like you right. used to have Articats, didn't you? We ran Articats for a long time. I think we ran them basically all the way from, uh, my first Articat was probably 1996, which is at our seven or is that our 600 or sorry, is that 580? Yeah. Yeah. And we had that old sled and we ran all the way up to probably we had, I think the last one we had was the 2012 that we sold to Doron. <laughs> Wasn't, didn't you say you had a cat that was like the fastest sled you've ever owned? Yes, the yeah. F7 was F7. probably the fastest sled ever. Yeah, I remember seeing pictures of that. Yeah. But yeah, at the end of the day, like, yes, we do currently ride Skidoos. I also have Polarises. I grew up on Polarises. That's how I learned, that's what I learned to ride on. At the end of the day, I don't look at ourselves as brand biased because we like what's coming out from all these different companies and we want to try all these different things. It just so happens that currently our favorite sled that we've ridden and that we've put lots of miles on happens to be uh, Skidoo Gen 4s and Gen 5s and that's yeah. just why we're gravitating there. 100%. So obviously, I mean, this is huge news, right? With, uh, I mean, they launched the Catalyst last year, but this year, wow, I mean, definitely hit us with, uh, with this new motor with the 858, which is pretty exciting. So we've been trying to sort of get up to speed on it, but uh, what do you think? Like, what do you think about this new, this new engine? Yeah, so it's interesting. Like last year, I think a lot of people were a little bit disappointed when they released the Catalyst because they released it in the 600. Uh, I think it was hinted at and most people imagined that it was coming, it was gonna come in a bigger bore 800 series motor. Um, doing some research, basically what I found out was Articat had intended to release the Catalyst with the 858, mm -hmm. but due to production shortages or, or really supply shortages with aluminum and different parts that they needed to make the motor, they couldn't make it happen, so their choice was either to delay the Catalyst a year or release it in the 600. And they went with releasing it in the 600, which I think is the right decision. Yeah, Because it's going to give people this year who ordered a 2024 Catalyst the, the opportunity to ride one and experience one. And if they love it, which I imagine a lot of people are going to, they'll then go and buy that 858 for next season. Yeah, 100%. I think that was, again, smart from a marketing perspective. Just, you know, let's do what we can, get the product out there, get it in people's hands, exactly. let them try it. And then, you know, they're gonna build up some market share with that sled, I'm sure. And then, you know, for next year, they'll have that, uh, they'll have that 858 available. Um, we, you know, we know a little bit about the engine. We've watched some of the videos and stuff that are out there. So yeah. it's an 858, supposed to have a little bit more displacement, a little bit more horsepower compared yeah. to previous model 800s. And also I think even comparison to uh, the, the do 850s, right? Yeah, I think it was that Articat was claiming something like 11% more power. They're not going to give a horsepower number because everyone's dyno is different. But yeah. if you look at their old 800 series that was around, let's say 160 horsepower. Now with this 858, you're probably in the neighborhood of like 170, 175, kind of like approaching what like a 900 turbo 180 horsepower would be Yeah, in a two stroke. I watched, um, and there's a really cool, if you guys see any of the uh, engineering videos that Articat's been putting out this year, by the way, they're marketing, they've stepped it up, they've been doing a great job this year, but any, any of those engineering videos where they're actually talking with the guys who helped to design the chassis, helped to design the motor, mm -hmm. um, there's a really good video out there that shows, and I think this is probably what's super exciting, is just how far down they've actually mounted this motor in the sled, in the chassis, it's pushed back even further towards the rider. Yeah. Which again, kind of the whole idea is to bring that- um, Centralize the weight and to keep it nice and low down so you have that low center of gravity, it makes it much more stable. Exactly, and then I think that's probably gonna be the most exciting thing is to see how it reacts, you know, not even just on the trail. I mean, obviously that's what we're concerned about, but 
um, even in the mountain too, yeah. for the guys that are running them in the mountains. It's the same chassis. So it's pretty interesting yeah. how they're using the same chassis for trail and for mountain and they can both excel in different ways. Exactly. So I think that's going to be, you know, that would be pretty cool. Um, and what's amazing is it's lighter, lighter than the 600. Yeah. <laughs> so how's like, how's that possible? Right? Yeah. I'm not sure. I think it comes down to really Articat engineering and working tirelessly over the past few years. Who knows how long they've been working on the 858. I think, the, as we know, the Catalyst platform was likely designed for the 858, and then they ended up, because they had delays and they couldn't produce that motor, they released it in the 600. So I think the 858 was always the plan. And yeah, being lighter than a 600, it's pretty interesting, pretty cool. I think the biggest question a lot of people had is why 858? Why not like 860 or 900? Yep. And I think at the end of the day, it comes down to the fact that they were trying to get that really tight form factor to fit in the body of the catalyst. And if they did it, made a 900, they'd probably have to have bigger bores, bigger pistons, and then it would be hard to fit in that sled. But also, um, look, reading some articles, what I found out was in terms of reliability of that motor, if they increased the horsepower more without making the motor larger, you would kind of fall off that balance and your reliability would go down. And that was something Arctic I didn't want because they wanted these motors to be reliable. And that's how they landed on that 858, which I think is a pretty cool horsepower number. Yeah. Or, or CC. Yeah. But the other thing too was it was, um, it was also power to weight, power to weight. Right. Sure. So I think that was the big thing was they wanted to get kind of the right, the right weight on that engine and the maximum amount of power out of it. And that's why they kind of landed at that. 858 yeah. based on all the components that they use to, to build that engine. So I think it's pretty, it's pretty exciting. Um, and I think again, they haven't released numbers yet. I know snow tracks was kind of talking a little bit about it, but probably around that sort of 170 to 180 mark, yeah. which is crazy because that's comparable to even some of the, like the 900 R four stroke that's, yeah. you know, that Skidoo's got. So, um, I think it'd be really interesting I certainly want to see, you know, what this engine looks like. I think the other thing that we, we were talking about a little bit earlier was one of the things that we love about the Skidoo two strokes is just how efficient they are, right? Yeah. And how clean they are. Very little smoke when you start up the sleds. They run really clean. Um, they're pretty good on oil and fuel. And I guess really, really the question we have is how is this 858 going to compare in terms of exactly. fuel economy, oil economy, but also just like general cleanness of running. Like we know from like my VR1 as well as my Indy, like the, <laughs> the sleds run awesome and those motors are a powerhouse. The 50 uh, Patriot is a powerhouse, but at the end of the day, they smoke a lot. Like when you start that sled, I like almost I got like smoked out choke. of the trailer. <laughs> so again, these are stuff, we, this is something we don't know and we won't find out until we get the chance to try it on the snow. From what I've heard, Articat will have uh, demos this season. So definitely keep in touch with your dealer to see if they're offering that. Also, if you somehow get your hands on an 858 Catalyst, Let us give know. us a call. Give us we a would call. love to try it out and, and, and get some content on that because it's at the end of the day in an industry now that we've been, sadly, Yamaha has decided to leave the industry. So we're left with three companies yeah. and we know Polaris and Skidoo are constantly innovating and doing new things. And it's great to see something brand new come from Articat. Mm -hmm. Like I was talking about it. If you look at Articat before the Catalyst, like 2012 until now, it's been the very similar chassis. Sure, there's been changes in functionality and features on the sled year after year, but they never really marketed it well. So from a, like a guy just looking at the sled, it looks the same. The gauge package has been the same. So yeah, it's just cool to see something new come into the industry. And definitely there's a lot of people that are curious about it. Oh yeah, definitely. I think the, um, a couple other things we'll touch on. And again, you guys can do some more research to, to learn about them. Um, but the other thing that was really interesting, we had some good conversations with some guys recently about the change in the gear case. And so what I do know is, you know, Articat, some of our older uh, F-Series sleds had the diamond drives in them. <laughs> Those were okay. Um, definitely kind of a different design in comparison to what Skidoo uses. Um, and then I think they got away from that. They went back to kind of your traditional um, gear case with, um, with the chain and with, you know, the two gears. But the new one, they've moved away from that completely is yeah. what we're seeing now. And they've gone to basically a belt drive, yeah. which is interesting. So I, I think that definitely has piqued my interest. I mean, if you think about it for, from a gear case standpoint, you no longer need to do oil changes because there's no oil. So now <laughs> you're chain. running, yeah, now <laughs> there's no, you're just running a belt. So um, I think it would be interesting to see how that actually holds up. 
Yeah, I guess the real question is reliability. Now you have a second belt. Is that belt going to blow? How long it's going to last? Like, these are questions we don't know. I know we found a little bit more information speaking to uh, Mike from Ultimax. Yep. Yeah, we talked to Mike uh, last weekend a little bit more detail about it. And he says, hey, it's a proven design. And I think it's actually come over from the motorcycle industry. And some of those bigger Harleys and some of those custom uh, custom motorcycles, they all run big, wide uh, belt drive systems. And he says that as long as it's built and, and kind of designed properly, they can basically last a lifetime without ever having to do any change, any change of a belt at all. Yeah, and then I guess my question that I asked him was like, if Articat's doing this, why aren't all the other brands doing it? And why is, is this gonna become the new industry norm? Mm -hmm. And I think really what it comes down to and what Mike was saying was, the cost to do it is significantly more expensive than a normal chain driven gear case. Yep. So I think that's probably why uh, we haven't seen that change in the industry, but who knows, this could be the start of what spikes that change. Yeah, and even some of the guys, again, for the mountain riders, I know that there's some custom uh, kits out there from some of the other companies that make those belt drives and they've converted them from uh, chain case over to belt drives. And again, we don't know too much about it, but it certainly looks like an interesting system that we want to sort of learn more about and see, yeah. see how it holds up. And I think, um, you know, obviously the last thing which, you know, we're pretty, pretty excited about, that was big news to hear about this new gauge from Articat. Yeah, I want to talk about that. So <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's my bread and butter. I love gauges and tech and sleds. So at the end of the day, like I talk, me and Mike have talk, talked about this in depth, but like you look at car companies, you look at snowmobile manufacturers, they're all trying to make infotainment systems for their vehicles. And sometimes they're great and sometimes they aren't. At the end of the day, they're not, they're like best, they're like, Focus is not software that's not been, they're, they're a vehicle manufacturer. So sure, they might have a department that does that, but why not leave infotainment system to the companies that do only that? Yeah. So you look at like now how we see in cars, Apple CarPlay and Android Auto, and that's kind of taken over. Same with snowmobiles. So now you see a company like Garmin that's had years and years of doing gauges for boats and GPSs and other types of vehicles to now be integrated into a snowmobile is super cool and that definitely spiked my interest. I had heard some rumors last year about the Garmin system, but didn't know if it was actually gonna come to fruition. Um, and now, now it's really here. So I think at the end of the day, you now have a full Garmin GPS unit that's incorporated into your machine, that's connected to your sled. So obviously you're gonna see your speed and all of the vital things you need to see from your sled on the gauge. But on top of that, you have a Garmin GPS. And me and Mike have spoken about this in depth. Like we've used BRP Go, we've used different, um, snowmobile navigation apps at the end of the day they may work but sometimes they fail and for for me especially when i'm riding on the trail the last thing i want to fail is my navigation i need to know where i am that's like super important to me mm -hmm. and that's why we've been using garments for years and they've never let us down or fail no matter how cold it is they always work so i think seeing that on the on the catalyst is an absolute game changer for the industry because garmin's a company that's been doing it for so long mm -hmm. And they are saying that uh, a majority of um, trail systems will be available on the Garmin for this season. But again, if your particular state or province is available, <laughs> it's kind of hard to tell. We won't know until we get that in hand. It's a dicey uh, subject. Yeah, it's definitely a little <laughs> bit of a dicey subject. Um, so yeah, we'll have to see on that. But I think the other thing that's super cool about the Garmin is you get a group ride feature now, yep. which is similar to like what Polaris's group ride is. So you can... Um, the only thing is it's only compatible between the different uh, G8 systems, so the different Garmin systems on the Catalyst. Um, so they don't interconnect with Polaris and with Skidoo BRP Go uh, group ride feature. So I think who knows in the future if they can connect those. I, I, I kind of doubt it. I think they'll probably stay separate. But another thing that's cool about that group ride feature is you can send messages through group ride and you can also send audio. So if you're connected to a communicator and another guy you're riding with is connected to a communicator, you can send a message through the Garmin instead of through the communicator. So what the significance of that is on the trail, I'm not sure. Maybe it's further range between the Garmin than you would have on a normal communicator. Because as we know, communicators can last like a kilometer or so distance between each other but Before when you're in the trees signal. it kind of slows down so yeah i'm curious how that how that actually plays in but the other thing that garmin has they have a feature on their gps's that's also available on the catalyst called cameras so you can connect cameras to the gps i don't really know what the purpose for that would be like i guess you could put a backup camera on your sled if you wanted it but 
I've never felt the need for that. <laughs> um, so yeah, I, I, the gauge and the technology is super exciting to me because it's the first time that we see a company like a company like Articap partner with Garmin to make an infotainment system for a sled. Yeah. And I think the other thing that's good to know is um, no other company has done this. Most companies, when they release new sleds, like for example, Skidoo, when they released uh, the Gen 5 with the new gauge, that new gauge wasn't available for any other model. So you could only get it in that sled. It's good to know that this year, Articat is releasing that G8 Garmin system. Uh, so if you bought a Catalyst that's a 600 for this year, for 2024, you can buy as an accessory that Garmin system and your dealership can install it. It's basically plug and play and it fits right in. This year? This year. That's amazing. So people can try that out and That's then next cool. year when they go to order an 858, they can choose to spec it. With, I, I actually think, no, it comes with the GPS regardless, but it's good to know that people can get the experience and try it this year because it's new. All right, yeah. so again, <laughs> anybody out there that's got one of these Catalyst 600s coming <laughs> and you're gonna order that Garmin gauge, Get in touch with us. We want to we wanna see what it's all about. Yeah, I'd love to get my hands on it. I think uh, in the next few weeks, I'm going to be going to the New York show, and then we'll be at the Toronto show, and I think they'll have booths there for Articat. So if we can get some content there for you guys, we definitely will on the gauge. Is that stuff I love. Like we see last year when Skidoo came out with the Gen 5, their new gauge system, and Polaris's uh, 7S system. And the strength of the Polaris 7S was that the GPS is built in, right? Yeah. But again, the downfall is they don't have all the trail maps. It's crowdsourced data. You don't know if the trails are actually accurate. With BRP, on the other hand, you have that because they've partnered with um, the Snowmobile Federation. So you have ac accurate trail maps. I know specifically in Ontario, that trail map is updating basically every day. So you know you have accurate information. But with BRP, now you have to plug your phone in. So there's a reliability issue there. And you so, signal. Yeah, exactly. With Polaris, you don't need signal, but the trails you don't know are accurate. With Skidoo, you need signal, but the trails are accurate. Yeah. Versus now you have the Garmin, which is a Garmin GPS, and that's what they're meant to do. So now the real question is, we know it's going to work, and it's not going to fail on the trail. That's for sure. Yeah. The question is just what trail maps are going to be available on it, and that's something we won't know until we have that in our hands. Cool, man. Well, listen, super exciting. I mean, I'm definitely... I'm super interested in this sled and hopefully we can get our hands on one. Yeah. It's great to have you back, man. Thanks. I'm only back <laughs> for a couple of days and then back to New York, but uh, no, it's good to be back in, in the studio recording. I was doing some videos the other day uh, in my trailer. Kind of awkward when you got to uh, squat down to get in the camera frame when you're in a, a narrow trailer, but you make do, but this is definitely a nicer setup yeah, for so recording. We've, we've got the garage cleaned up a little bit, so we've got some space to do some yeah. work. We're, Mike you know, shoved his like 35 <laughs> fishing poles over in that corner. <laughs> we got lots of content. Obviously, uh, you know, we're prepping for the upcoming season. You know, we we just got word, hey, we just got word that your 2024 sled's here. Yeah, Mike, Mike let me know that my sled's in. Uh, I didn't get too excited because I'm not going to be here when it gets built. Mike's <laughs> going to be in charge of that department. But uh, yeah, it's good to know that sleds are coming in. Um, no worries there. I think we're kind of slowly getting past the production shortages we saw in COVID, COVID and hopefully yeah. that's a thing of the past and everyone gets their sleds on time and people aren't waiting until February to get their sleds. Exactly. Yeah. Anyway, we will, uh, we're going to wrap up. Again, we're really excited about the upcoming season. We've um, got tons of content, obviously, that we're planning for you guys. So uh, stick around, ride along with us throughout the season. We're going to have you know, some big trips planned. We've got new sleds coming. And uh, yeah, we've got, uh, got lots to do. So we'll see you guys on the next one. See you later, guys.